Godspeed. Good evening. Please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance is to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen meeting for December 19th. Public comment period. Is there anybody in the public who would like to speak? Seeing none, bring it back to the the board for announcements and community calendar. Regina? Just Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Phil? Yes, uh, congratulations to uh, Superintendent Murphy, who was uh, um, chosen as Superintendent of the Year in the state of New Hampshire, and there are a bunch of fine uh, superintendents in this state, and it's a great, uh, a great state to educate your children, and she has done a remarkable job. Uh, during her tenure with SAU 90 and is a great partner to the uh, municipal side of the house great leadership uh, The stem program that she pioneers over there and uh, congratulations to her and a, a birthday wish to a, a Hampton resident uh, Samantha Lyford. Thank you, sir Rick? Uh, Nothing tonight. Thank you Neither do I at this time so consent agenda We have the Hampton Cemetery deeds. We have a hazard mitigation plan resolution and a property tax agreement motion to move the consent agenda motion second all those in favor unanimous approval of minutes of December 5th so moved second all those in favor unanimous first appointment is Christy Pullman How are you? All right. I, you guys all should have received your November financials. In the mail last week, and they are on the website and have been distributed to the budget committee. Um, it's the 11th report of 2016, and the target is 91.67%. The month's total income was $385,704. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at $278,920, uh, which is over the adjusted month's target by $30,920. The other major contributors to the month's total were interest on taxes at $6,878, building permits at $17,922, Departmental income at $34,188, parking lots at $2,832, and the real estate trust at $41,307. The expense report shows at the end of the November, the operating departments without debt service but with open POs were 88.62% of the budget, which is under the month's target by 3.05% or 736 thousand two hundred and seventy nine dollars uh, in November of 2015 we were at 88.29 percent spent compared to the 88.62 in 16 or if you look at the dollars in November of 2015 we were under target at by uh, 789 thousand compared to the 736 thousand uh, this year overall the departments as a whole are running under the target of 91 Point six seven, and I'm going. I'll just go through all the departments that are over target or very close to target for you. Uh, town manager is at 92.86 percent. The town clerk has uh, sections that are over target, but the department as a whole is at 86.17 percent. Legal is at 92.14 percent. Municipal insurance is at 96.23 percent. Uh, the majority of the bills in this category have been paid at this point. I think we've even uh, paid our last health insurance bill. Parking administration is at 105.95%. Uh, I don't expect them to change since I believe the parking lots are officially closed now. I don't think there's any more concerts or anything. The police department is at 91.75% when you include the open POs. Uh, it should be noted here that the holiday pay and career incentives were all paid in November. so. So uh, those are only just paid once a year, so that could be attributing to their target. On uh, 
uh, page eight and nine, the fire department is at 89.33% when you include the open purchase orders. And the same thing here, their holiday pay and career incentives were also paid out in November. Hydrants is at 97.03%. The Departments of Public Works is at 84.29% with open POs. Mosquito control is at 93.2%. Patriotic purposes is at 136.42%. Um, let's see. The 2015 encumbrances are showing that 91% have been expended to date. The Recreation Fund 24, the balance is $161,792. There have been beach sticker donations of $17,660 this year, with $16,442 being granted in scholarships. The Fund 25 for the Cable Committee has a balance of $168,767. Fund 26 for Private Detail has a balance of $137,860. Uh, fund 27, the EMS Fund has a balance of $396,589. And the Wastewater System Development Charge, uh, the fees collected in 2016 now total $57,996 with a balance in that account of 172680 There are a few expenses that we need um, that have been expended since then, so that balance will be dropping. But And I think that was all for November. Any questions? No. No, none. Great, uh, great work, uh, Director. Great work with the budget process, and Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. Thank you. Rick? Yeah, you've done a great job this year, and uh, it seems like we're getting pretty close to spending all the money. Getting there. Huh? <laughs> well, things have even changed. I was just going through the, after, for the middle of December, and we've already, you know, have lines that have changed drastically, like the sidewalks. Uh, a lot of people look at this and say nothing's been spent. Well, it's expended, 26000 in bills last week, plus the Warren article. So things have changed, are changing weekly at this point. So. Well, thank you for keeping track of it. Thank you. Yes, that is actually something I wanted to touch upon. Even though it says 736000 that is still there at the end of the month, there was some confusion a week or a couple weeks ago at the Budget Committee. There's still probably bills we haven't received. I mean, that's probably all changed since you've done this report. Yes, I would um, imagine. in November we've already paid, the, I mean in December, I'm sorry, we've already paid all of our gas and diesel, which we hadn't paid at the end of November because the bill goes through November 30th. So they come at the beginning of December. Those have been paid, which accounts for a good chunk of money. Um, electric bills, the same thing. They run the periods on the electric. Most of the electric bills are running from like the 11th or 12th of one month to the 11th or 12th of the next month. So we still have two months worth of electricity and utility bills, so to speak. Um, another two months worth of gas compared to what's in here, gas and diesel. The sidewalks was another big example. Um, Public Works, I know they had said the si no, no money has been spent on sidewalks. They had questioned, but actually all of it has been spent along with the majority of the Warren articles since these financials have been produced. So, okay. And Mr. Chairman, I would like to ask the board for permission to present something to the budget committee that has been prepared by Christy. Sure. Um, Why don't you explain it if you want? Yeah, someone had, I believe, did you? I sent it to the board. I forgot to bring my copy, but I okay. did send it to all of you earlier today, and I put a copy in your mailboxes. Okay. They were, someone had produced on the budget committee uh, Excel spreadsheet that was showing increases and decreases that were not correct. I could tell just by looking at it right in the beginning. It was not correct because probably about 14 or 15 lines had the same increase amount. And then it got in one meeting saying that uh, wages had increased by 700000 in the budget this year. And that is totally not true. So Christy, thank you for doing this, put together actual increases in decreases from last year's 16 budget to this year's 17 budget that we all agreed to. And that now is in the hands of the budget committee. So I would like to, if okay, present this report, which is accurate to the budget committee so that we can eliminate wrong things being said to, at the meeting and on camera. Because saying that we have increased wages by $700,000 was totally untrue. The wage line increased 465000 but we also had approximately 184000 in decreases to that line, total wages. So that's 282000 So they're stating wrong information that everyone at home is listening and getting. So I would like to provide this to the Budget Committee 
so that they can have the accurate information to look at. And this can all be traced back to the budget. And this is something that we've produced, not yes. something that... Christy has produced this report, yes. And the backup shows um, every line item in the budget is on there, so you would be able to look at that and see all every single line. The, it's a total of 451 lines or whatever. I, don't, yes. I forgot mine, but it has all of the lines right there so everyone can see. You know, all the lines that didn't change, the right. lines that decreased, the lines that increased, instead of just looking at only the increases. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, may I, and, and thanks for bringing that up, uh, Selectman Barnes, and then you, you talked about uh, the 700000 that was still in the piggy bank that is really not still in the piggy bank because it's the call in the business, there are expenses that have been incurred but not yet paid. Right. And so we heard that disinformation a couple of weeks ago at public comment period. Uh, the gist of that and then we've got that erroneous data and I would just say that uh, the budget this year is presented uh, by the selectmen is up what percent Mr. Welch? Ballpark? 1.1. 1.1%. So So uh, that's the bottom line <coughs> increase across a budget that's in between 20 and 30 million dollars uh, from last year. The, uh, the big money ticket items are going to be going on the warrant so uh, the citizens, uh, the registered voters will have the chance to vote up or down what they want to invest in their community. But we essentially have a flat budget. And Christy, I would like to uh, commend you and applaud you for uh, the tremendous amount of work that you have done with these uh, corrections to misinformation. Uh, and it's, it's okay to have misinformation as long as it's not calculated or some part of a grand scheme, which um, uh, that doesn't appear to be the case. Uh, this is a professional organization. It's a professional corporation. We're audited. Um, Ms. Barnes is uh, an auditor, and uh, you do a fabulous job. But I know that uh, to correct this information, to provide information requests, which is your job, uh, uh, take a lot of time and energy from you, and it is not diminished in any way uh, the tremendous, tremendous work you do and how you integrate both with the board, Mr. Welch, uh, and the entire department staff in the town. So thank you again very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We're all set. Thank you for um, One you more thing I had. Sure. Um, the budget last while week. While you're here? Yes, while I'm here. <laughs> last week we had uh, the board, I had presented some gasoline and diesel line item changes and then was suggested that I go back and fix, correct them in the budget. So I just brought uh, the corrections to uh, the board with all of the gasoline and diesel line uh, line items updated in accordance with that spreadsheet that I had provided last week. So if you guys choose to do so, there is a new 2017 um, Board of Selectmen budget amount along with a default budget amount too because we up obviously updated the gasoline and diesel lines in there. So we had cut 40068 or $69, I believe, was the difference there. So. If you guys would like to vote on those new amounts, and then I can send that. It was forty thousand and sixty-eight uh, dollars that we reduced the two thousand and seventeen budget by for so gasoline could, and could, diesel. Mr. Chairman, may I? Uh, sure. Could you uh, frame that motion for us to yep. reflect the exact figures and yep. the change? So the new two thousand and seventeen Board of Selectmen budget amount is twenty-six million eight hundred and fifty-four thousand five hundred and seventy-one dollars. Motion by Mr. Bean. So moved. Second. Second by Rick. All those in favor? Unanimous. And then the new default amount is down by $39,068. Uh, one of the gasoline and diesel lights was 1000 less for some reason in the default. So the new default amount would be $26,450,035. And I'll move that. Moved by Rick. Seconded by Regina. All those in favor? Unanimous. So I will get, um, I just provided each of you with the new summary, and I will send that off to the budget committee so that they have the new summary also. Thank you for doing that. Yep. It Did we? Did you change the lines so now it's just yes. one line yep. in each? If you look under the administration in public works, police, yep. and in fire, you will see that the gasoline and diesel lines are there. They're still in the other sections because they were in there for 16, but they're zeroed. Okay. So um, that's how it's reading now. And then cemetery building, recreation, and animal control were the only other departments that had gasoline or diesel lines, and so that just stayed right in their budget because they have smaller budgets. Alrighty. Okay. Thank so you very much. I will send that all off to them. All right. Have a Merry Christmas, everyone. You too. Merry Thank Christmas. You.
Next one is Chris Jacobs, director, and Jennifer Hill, deputy director, of Public Works. Good evening. Good evening. Jennifer's got an update on the bicentennial seawall. So, so I do. Um, I presented today for uh, approval the money that we discussed last week uh, to get the contractors started. Let's get the engineers on board to get the stabilization plan um, commencing down at Bison Center. I received right. word from the state today that our permit number, so our emergency permit will be in hand tomorrow. Uh, they have been great working with us, got them the information, and turned it right around. We hope to begin Tuesday, uh, right after Christmas, and it should take about three weeks. Uh, obviously, weather dependent, only can transport the rock. You know, when we're not in blizzard conditions and only could place the rock during low tide in non-blizzard conditions. Um, so that is moving forward as we discussed. The other update to that is, I guess, later on in the agenda here, um, the Warren article that was before you originally for the wall. So I can sort of stop it there or we can discuss that. That is up to you. Go, right? All right. Might as well do it right now while we're here. That way, you don't have to. About. Absolutely. Um, so, in trying to look at uh, what the next steps are, uh, we talked about this will be the stabilization. All the stone will be there. We'll be reusing the stone, but there is uh, options as far as what we do in 2017 um, to redo the wall. We have to permit a new wall. That permitting can take six to nine months. Um, so by the time March meeting were to happen, if it were to be approved, it would still be six to nine months before uh, we could even get a permit to get it out to bid to do construction. So my thought process was to present to you almost two options. You know, let's look at what I'm calling option A, which is raising and appropriating the money that's needed to do the design. Do the design, do the bid, get it out there, get it permitted so that it can be built first thing 2018. Um, and that option is $120,000. Um, that would cover um, all the, like I said, the design documents, the permitting, and the bidding documents and bidding assistance uh, with the engineer. Basically, the other option uh, that could be put out there is looking to actually appropriate the permitting design bid documents and the construction of the wall. Um, the estimates for the wall replacement that we are looking at uh, you put that all together, it comes in at $2.3 million. Uh, so I, I really just sort of wanted to put both of those on the table, let you tell me sort of which way you want it to head, and then I've written up some language uh, for either option so that we could move forward. Gina? So if we went with just the 120000 because by the, like you said, by the time March came, we still are going to have to wait six to nine months. So then we're going to be in December, January, whenever it is. We'll be right back here about this so, time with the costs that we would then write a warrant for 18 for construction. Right. So we could, and then the, right, we would do next year, we would do the rest of it. Correct. The match I meeting. That would be the so-called plan if you have it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. All right. Thank you. Bill? Um, all support of uh, option A. What do you think, Fred? I believe that option A is the way we should go. The uh, the fact that we're going to be six, at least six, probably nine months before we have all the information in our hands to write a warrant. That would include the bidding and everything else. So we go to town meeting with a real figure and let show that to the taxpayers. Um, there's no sense appropriating uh, 2.2, 2.3 million dollars uh, that we can't spend because we don't have the implementation uh, data to do that so let's find out what it was really going to cost let's get the designs done and only spend the minimum amount of money to accomplish that goal I'll make a motion for option a I'll second all those in favor unanimous all right so that is my update on the wall so what do we have to do now Fred do we have to just send them uh, we'll amend the warrant article that's there uh, to it. represent that hundred and twenty thousand dollars and we will send that amended warrant article to the budget committee. Very good. Thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. The other item that's before uh, 
the board it would be the uh, polymer. Uh, catatonic polymer uh, supplies. It's a chemical that we use within the wastewater treatment plant. We blend it or mix it in with the wet sludge uh, before it goes through the dewatering process. This helps it um, stick together, dewater better. Um, there was because it's a popular question. There was eight bidders that this was sent out to, uh, bidders as far away as Texas, uh, North Carolina, a couple in Pennsylvania, Ohio. Uh, there's not, you know, there's only so many companies to deal with for these types of chemicals. The other thing is we ask them to submit actual samples and we run these with the type of sludge that we have. Uh, we actually determine which one gives us a better product, i.e. drier sludge, which would result in less tipping fees, less transportation. Uh, Cone Chemical Company submitted two um, chemicals, uh, two different chemicals. We tested them both. Um, Paul Dine submitted one, Salinas. LLC submitted one, and it comes out that Cone Chemical Company is the would be the low bidder based upon the amount of effluent that we use. So, so please frame the motion for yeah, the lowest bidder. Yeah, there you go. I don't actually have that bid recommendation in front of me. That was something that Mike did. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> would you like it? I grabbed my files. This one we had got in a few weeks it's ago, but like we, yeah, okay. we did have to That's test another um, chemical, which is where there was a delay in it. So, Public Works Department recommends that we award the uh, polymer contract to Polydyne Inc. as the lowest responsibility to submit for the item requested. Uh, we recommend it. Um, and ask for your approval for two reasons. One, um, it is a multi-year contract, and it does exceed fifty thousand dollars annually. So I have a. So I want to make that motion. So moved. Motion. Second. 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 All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank That's you. It. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, you guys. Well Merry done. Merry Christmas. Yes, sir. sir. Thank you. Next thing's town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, remind folks to please remove their trash and recycling carts from the streets and sidewalks once they have been emptied. If containers, uh, if, if collections will not take place due to weather conditions, and we hope that won't happen, uh, please do not place them out on the streets and sidewalks as they will interfere with plowing operations. Thank you to our residents who are recycling. As our tipping fees for the disposal of re non-recycled wastes increase, we need your assistance in recycling more so that we can hold the line on taxes and expenses. If everyone recycled all of their paper products, we would remove 50% of the solid waste that we must pay for to dispose of. This represents an additional 20% off of your disposal fees or approximately $75,000 annually for which you will not be taxed. Also, thank you to the 99.9% 99 .9 of our residents who are not parking on streets between 1 a.m. and 7 a.m. in accordance with the parking uh, van ordinance. We appreciate your assistance in providing for proper street maintenance during the winter months. The time period for which petition warrant articles to request changes in the zoning ordinance has ended as of Wednesday, September 14th. The time period for submitting petition warrant articles for all other uh, subjects allowed by statute, other than zoning uh, petitions, ends at 5 p.m. on January 10th, 2017. Please present your petitions to the Selectman's office by that date and time. That's it, Mr. Oh, and yeah, I should say, I hope everybody has a merry, happy, prosperous, and safe Christmas and New Year's and we look forward to having all of you back <laughs> as citizens of the town without any injuries or mishaps during the holiday season. Very good. Any questions for the town?
town manager. I have not. And uh, Mr. Welsh, you and uh, all your department heads and employees, uh, Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Rick. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Merry Christmas, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, have old business. Warren articles. We already did the bicentennial wall one. We have one here for the library. Uh, the library would like to amend the Warren article, uh, Mr. Chairman, so that at the request of the Budget Committee, they made the suggestion that the words uh, describing the fact that the children's library is in the basement be added to the to the Warren article. The library is, is willing to do that and request your permission to do so. No objection? Yes, sir. Warren out uh, so motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. We can change that and send that back to the Budget Committee. The next thing we have is new business. 805 Vehicle and Traffic Parking Revisions. Catching up with you. You go right ahead. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, we're trying to uh, streamline the parking requirements and provisions that are in the ordinance. Um, we've been through this with the, with the police department because things were just confusing. Uh, we have sent it to police. They have reviewed it. Uh, as of right now, they are completely in favor of it. One of the things that we found to be interesting was that uh, when we looked at, for instance, the uptown parking lot on, on High Street, um, there's nothing there to prevent people from parking there 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and literally abandoning their cars as long as they have a parking sticker. And in fact, in some cases, that's exactly what was being done. Uh, we weren't able to uh, clean the area, so we have to, we, we put something in here so we can ask people to move their cars occasionally so we can get in with our public works crews and clean all the material and debris that's there, plus cut back all the vegetation that needs to be cut back at the front of the parking area. Uh, that's that's probably the biggest change in here. Uh, what we've done is we have um, indicated that people cannot park uh, in our in our uh, parking facilities, campers, that is tent type campers, um, other type campers, uh, four wheel campers, semi trailer trucks. We've been having trouble with that. Um, we do sell space occasionally to folks with large vehicles, uh, particularly in the summertime when, when they're bringing things in for various activities at the beach. And we have a special rate for that that the board set a number of years ago, so we, we continue to, to, to work at that. Uh, we have <coughs> made it very clear that our parking areas during a snow emergency are all open to the public. It was confusing to some, because some of them were and some of them weren't. So basically, we tried to streamline that as well and make it work better. One of the other things that we've done is, as you know, uh, because we give re every year we give you a warrant for the collection of tens of thousands of dollars worth of dog fees, which are not being paid on, on time. Um, this ordinance controls the issuance of stickers for cars and vehicles for residents uh, for use of parking and and the, the town landfill and, and other parking, other activities of the town. Uh, we are suggesting to you strongly that if the dog licenses are not paid, that the sticker not be issued. And the reason we're doing that is because we're committing substantial time, both our dog officer, our animal control officer, and our police department in chasing down these things. The court refuses to hear these cases, uh, even though the statute requires them to. And for us to petition the Superior Court would require us to send our town council into court for every one of these dog licenses. Some of these go back two and three years, people just refusing to pay. The only, uh, the only alternative to that is to take them to the Superior Court at this point, which is a serious matter. We don't want to do that because of the amount of money it would cost a resident to do that. We simply want them to pay the fee and have it over with and get their license. So that's one of the big things that's changed here. Other than that, it's basically housekeeping. We took out all the words that shouldn't be there, the, the ands, the buts, and the fours that, that, that were inadvertently put in, we've taken those out. Any questions, Rick? Um, <clears throat> this week I was uh, at the park and ride. So they have the same problem over there with... Uh, they do. 
And what does the state do about it? The state nothing? does nothing. Um, the one over on Timber Swamp Road? Yeah. At the parking road? Yeah. 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 You can just bring a trailer over there and leave it? Yeah. All winter long. Yeah. It's used as a commercial parking lot for uh, commercial ventures. Commercial ventures yeah, it use is. it for uh, working out of there. There's a, there's a bread company that has stuff in there. There's there's been boats that have been left there all winter. There's been campers that have been left there all winter. Uh, the mm. state just allows them to do that. And frankly, we encourage people to do that simply because our parking lots now are plowed in the winter time, so we can have a place for people during snow emergencies. Uh, if they were to park in our parking lots, we would have to have them move them every time we had a snowstorm, which is very inconvenient for them. So we would prefer they use the park and ride, and the state doesn't object to that. And as you know, the beach parking facilities are generally not cleaned. Uh, the state's been doing a better job of cleaning them out in the last year or so uh, when it does snow. But people are allowed to park there without paying a fee, even though their, their statutory ordinance says from October to, I believe it's April, they have to pay a dollar an hour. But they took all the machines away, so you have to pay anything. So we encourage folks to park there if they can just get them off the street where they can be protected. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, I think this has cleaned it up somewhat. We've obviously had how many how many times going back over the past couple of years have we talked about the high street parking lot and cars that are left up there and the time it's taken to go uh, send the police up there to find track down who they are and why they're there and if, if we can. The current ordinance uh, said that you could park a car there even if it's not registered for operation on the highways, even if it doesn't have a sticker, even if it doesn't have a residence sticker. Uh, and that's exactly what's been going on. And that's the current ordinance? That's the current yeah, ordinance. Mr. Chairman. This has changed so that the ordinance says the motor vehicle, because okay. you have to operate it to get it when, when will that be effective? This would be effective upon your passage. Okay. And this would be so, and if you have an outstanding dog license that you haven't paid, which I, believe is like what eight dollars or something it's to register your dog yes. i don't six or eight dollars i think yeah you just they would you would get withhold the resident parking sticker until when they come in for their license right. for their motor okay. vehicle we give them a sticker and we would tell them how much their dog fee is if they would don't wish to pay it then we would simply not give them a sticker. okay all right thank you so motion to accept motion these to changes accept. second uh, second by Rick. All those in favor? Unanimous. We'll do the best we can to administer it compassionately. Very good. Dedication of the annual report. Yes. <laughs> You're looking for We're looking for a person or persons to dedicate the town report to. Um, one of the names that we came up with was Mrs. Preston, who passed away this year. Uh, very well-loved person in town and did an awful lot for this community, and it would be very nice to have her picture. And I'll write. make that um, motion that we nominate. I, I think it's a great motion, and I like Mrs. Preston. Uh, but I also, we, we it doesn't have to be just one person. No, it can't. And it, we had uh, uh, Mr. Merrill, Russ Merrill. Right. Oh, passed away true. this year, and, and he was a uh, school trustee. He was a. I don't know. They remember. would make a good. Uh, two two good them. people, the yeah, two of them. Two excellent people. And make, a nice, make that motion, Rick. I'll make, make the motion for Mr. Merrill and Mrs. Preston. Is there anybody else that we can think I'm of? I'm sure we're overlooking somebody, and we apologize, but I think uh, to represent those two stewards and uh, lions and lionesses of the community would be would be wonderful. I support Rick's motion, seconded. So we have a motion by Rick, seconded by Phil for Ms. Charlotte Preston and uh, Russell Merrill. So all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. Lady. Any other new business? Closing comments? Nothing, Mr. Chairman. So the next selectman's <laughs> meeting is? Is this 9th, I think. I think it's the 9th of January. 9th of January. Yes. So I like that kind of talk, Mr. Welch. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. I want to thank. I want to wish everybody a very merry, merry Christmas <laughs> and a happy and safe New Year. Absolutely. Motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Unanimous.